Austrian suffers from a terrible affliction which makes the simple task of walking along the pavement a difficult maneuver. You see, this man suffers from voiceover syndrome. He's so engrossed in listening to my voiceover that he fails to notice dangerous objects. been the fastest thing on two legs. <laughs> so he says to Ben Johnson, <laughs> I'll race you to that lamppost over there. <laughs> right, says Ben, OK. So into the pub goes, I drags out your man, Mickey Murphy, to give us the ready, steady go. <laughs> ready, steady go, says he. Johnson screaming off down the road like a shagging banshee. <laughs> and where am I? Going nowhere fast. With me ankle chained to the bumper of a Ford Cortina. <laughs> ben Johnson, you're a bloody cheat. <laughs> and one day, one day you'll be found out. <laughs> Though I'll not be the one to grass you up. <laughs> been the fastest thing on two legs. Damn pollution. The stuff that comes out of the bloody tap nowadays. <laughs> now, me and Ron have come down here tonight to lay on something special for you people. And that something special we're going to lay on tonight is called... A rubber woman. A feast of entertainment. <laughs> a rubber woman is a feast of entertainment. <laughs> Norman, uh... <laughs> what? What's that? What's what? That? I mean, you let yourself go a bit, haven't you? I certainly have not. This is my empathy pouch. What? <laughs> my empathy pouch is a new idea from the uh, States. You oh. See? No. Yeah, when your wife's pregnant, you wear one of these and you feel empathetic with her. Yeah? <laughs> the word is pathetic, actually. Uh, uh, what's it supposed to do? Oh, it doesn't do anything. It's just a bulge. You, uh, you wear it and you can feel what she's feeling, you know, uh, fulfilled, satisfied. Up the duff. Yeah. <laughs> My wife is with child, actually, Gareth. I just want to share her pregnancy. I want to share her pain, her anxiety. Her maternity frocks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's it. Have a good laugh at me. <laughs> because I feel really strongly about this, I think it's rather nice that I want to share her painful burden, actually. Yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, you're right. Sorry, Norman. No. Oh, that's all right. It's OK. So, what are you hoping for? Well, we don't really mind if it's a boy or a girl. Or a cushion. <laughs> <laughs> Just pack it in with you, Gareth. Oh, sorry, Norman, but it is ridiculous. <laughs> Do you really think so? Yeah, yeah. You look like Marlon Brando with wind or something. <laughs> Just take it off. OK, I'll take it off under one condition. OK, what's that? You take yours off first. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Thank you for coming. Now, we all know why we're here, yes? Well, we're here because we all have a problem that we share. Now, can anybody tell me what that problem is? Yes? Well, the problem is that we all share is the problem of communicating with each other. <laughs> and tonight, we're going to take the first step to solving that problem by talking in a friendly and open way using what I like to call our voices. <laughs> now, who'd like to set the ball rolling? It's Mary, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> now, Mary, 
did you relate to what I was saying about the problem of solving a problem by sharing a problem? Yes, Dave. I did relate. And I'd say your philosophy was incredibly profound and well-based. But for myself personally, I find pluralistic therapy retrogressive <laughs> in the, the group or social one is not at all advantageous to certain segments of the class in its entirety. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Well, I'm sure we all learnt something there about the problem of relating through communication. You see, to me, Dave, <laughs> communicating, thereby relating or expressing one's thoughts, uh, not, not solely through the medium of sound language, but also through identifiable gesture. Yes, inherent thank you. In thank memory. you, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> so what is communication? How can I best define it? Well... Communication. communication or relating one's opinions, ideas, feelings to another or indeed to engender sympathetic mutual understanding between two or more yes, people. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> communication, then, is simply talking to each other. Well, not only talking to each other, Dave. Oh, oh. shut your mouth, you stupid cow! <laughs> <laughs> well, Percy, how are you? Champion, George, how are they? Champion as well. Ah, well, that's champion then, George, eh? right. <laughs> What have you got in cardboard box, then? Oh, somewhere to bought from Bloke, don't pub. Life's <laughs> <laughs> in for a rich surprise tonight, I know, is it? I bet she is. Where'd you put the batteries, then? <laughs> Nay, nay, it's not a torch. <laughs> I know it's not a torch, you daft wazzik. A torch has ring on the end. Dang up from there. What you bought wife cucumber for, then? You going on that shift or what? <laughs> nay, yon's not a cucumber. This is a chameleon. A what? A chameleon, one of them funny lizards, what changes its appearance to blend in with background. Get <laughs> away, you daft beggar. That's a cucumber. It's not, it's a chameleon. <laughs> it just looks like a cucumber because it's blending in with other veggies there, look. <laughs> so suppose if you put it over there with my toolkit, it would turn into a ratchet screwdriver or something. Yeah, I happen to like it, would I? Well, go on then. Aye, all right. First, it, that is a cauliflower. Bloody hell, chameleons change shape already. Look at that. <laughs> this is your chameleon. All oh, right. Right. Put it over there. Let's see if it turns into a ratchet screwdriver. Then. Aye, all right, right. There's <laughs> not much happening. Give it time. Give it time. <laughs> It. You can wait from now till doomsday, nothing will happen. You know why? Why? Because it's a chuffing cucumber, that's why. <laughs> that broke down pub con the reeton proper. He must have thought you were born yesterday. What do you mean? Well, when bloke sold it to you, you must have noticed it didn't blend in without else in pub. No, no, that one didn't, no. This one did, though. <laughs> Hey, Jed. What? <laughs> <laughs> you think you could play cricket on snow? <laughs> no, but I tried it on grass once. <laughs> I, um, I also tried it once with smack. <laughs> I've got a long leg. Uh... I've got a short, square leg. Oh! Uh, <laughs> the colours, the whites, the greens. <laughs> The little wicket. <laughs> Over. <laughs> Go on, mate. <clears throat> Cheers. <laughs> All right. 
You know what my wife said to me? No, what? She said, you're a fat slob. <laughs> she said, you're unfit. She didn't. She did. <laughs> I said, right, right. Fitness, right, is, is all a state of mind, like, you old cow. I said, <laughs> I said right, if, if you think you're fit, you'll feel fit. Yeah, that's right, just cos you've got a bit of a gut on you don't mean, right, you're not fit, like, right? Yeah, 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 that's right. I said, hey, don't let this belly spilling over my trousers fool you, like. Yeah. No, cos, like, underneath this man of flab, right, <laughs> I'm a really fit bloke. Yeah, I know what you mean, right? I mean, I've had a bit of trouble like that myself. Yeah. Not a lot of people know this, but I am one of the fittest blokes around for my age. Yeah? How old are you? 21. Yeah. <laughs> you see, nowadays, they just go by looks, right? Yeah. It's what you look like that they go by. I mean, they don't look past the rolls of flab to the man underneath, like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> look, look, take, take yesterday, for example, right? I was running for the bus. I must have run what? 20 yards, right? Yeah. Now, admittedly, the driver had to give me a kiss of life. Yeah. <laughs> but, and here's the point, it's how quickly you recover that matters, right? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's how an athlete is judged, right? How quickly he recovers, you know? So how quickly did you recover then? Well, I was right, I was rain by bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean, I mean, same thing with me, right? Yeah. Last week, I dropped my wallet on the floor, right? Bent over to pick it up. Well, by the fuss they made at the bloody hospital, you'd have thought they'd had an heart attack. <laughs> so, anyway, I says to that doctor, I says, right, I says, listen, matey, yeah. even that Sebastian Kogi's that gets spots before his eyes ringing in his ears if he bends over big sharp, Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> you're a bit stocky, because yeah. you're a bit stocky, like, people think you're unfit. I mean, I mean, look at Bernard Manning. Oh, little Bernard, eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, he could box 15 rounds or run a marathon if he wanted to, but people just think he's a fat sod. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about old Nigel Lawson? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, what do we care? What do we care? We know that we got the fitness underneath when we need yeah, it. Yeah, we just don't bloody flaunt it, That's do we? Right. Yeah. The women love it. Yeah. 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 Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> right. Fancy another pint? Nah, better not. I'm watching my figure, you know. <laughs> <laughs> To sum up, then, on our best equipment survey amongst female tennis players, the ace racket came out the best buy at £35. Excel ladies' tennis shoes were the most popular at £29.99 a pair. And the mighty atom was right up there. <laughs> Jennings, you're a long way from your patch, O'Keefe. Okay? Just a social call, Jennings. I thought we agreed. Your territory's from the herbaceous perennials to the Jerusalem artichokes. <laughs> cool. You control the scarlet line of beans through the Savoy cabbage. I know all of this, Jennings. As I said, it's just a social call. <laughs> Do you normally get tooled up for a social call, O'Keefe? You can't be too careful. The word is, there's green fly on the manor. <laughs> so, what do you want from me then, O'Keefe? I want to know how to propagate begonias from leaf cuttings. <laughs> I don't know nothing about begonia propagation. Don't give me that crap, Jennings. The word is, in Parkhurst, you are number one top dog begonia wax propagator. In fact, the word is, you could propagate from a single leaf at less than the desired temperature without using John Innes compost. <laughs> all right, all right. Maybe I do know about propagating begonias from leaf cuttings. Why should I tell you? 
<laughs> you don't have to tell me anything, Jennings. As if you never want to see your prize cucurba de pepper ovifera again. <laughs> I'll tell you what you want to know. Just leave my cucurbitic guy alone, all right? <laughs> That's better, Jennings. Now tell me what I do with the begonia leaf. Do I cut the stem with the heel of the parent tuber attached, or what? <laughs> just a minute, I'll give just a minute. If I tell you what you want to know, we'll sing it for me. <laughs> You're not as green as you are, Brassica Olorisia looking, are you, Jennings? <laughs> what do you want? Well, you know I'm growing some. Allium Cepa Aliaceae. Yeah, I've seen them. Nice onions. I don't know the best time to bend the tops over on. <laughs> you drive a hard bargain, Jennings. <laughs> Too hard, in fact. So my advice to you, old son, is to watch it. Watch what, O'Keefe? <laughs> Gardener's World, sir. There's a repeat on the television this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Ronnie never forgets. He's got a really good way of remembering your face. I rip it off and stick it in my wallet. <laughs> uh, good evening. Gareth and I are feeling really good today, aren't we, Gareth? Yeah, yeah, we're feeling really great. And we're feeling really great because we've just been on holiday. Yes. They even go on holiday together. <laughs> <laughs> I go on holiday with Gareth because... He's my best friend. And I go on holiday with Norman because he pays for it. <laughs> we had a good time, though, didn't we? Yes, we did have a good time because this year we went somewhere really special. We went to Haiti. Hello, hi. Hello, hi. <laughs> Haiti, not Tahiti. Sorry. You see, in Haiti, the high priestess of voodoo makes a little doll that's meant to represent somebody or other. Yeah, that's right. And while we were over there, this, this old hag came up to me and she, she gave me this doll. <laughs> and this, this one's supposed to be Norman. <laughs> I mean, look at that, a bit of old donkey hair on that head. <laughs> it's close in one respect. <laughs> and what you're supposed to do is you, you, you stick a pin in the doll mm -hmm. and it's supposed to hurt the person it represents. What a load of nonsense. Right, so here is the doll of Norman. Danger. And here is the pin. I'm terrified. And what we do is we stick the pin in the doll, like that. And Can't feel it. <laughs> so we stick it in here, and here, and here. <laughs> Nothing happens whatsoever. Even if we stick it in his jugular like that. <laughs> What's a load of rubbish? Moody stuff, seriously, must be completely out of their skull. disturbing you? Uh, no. no. <laughs> Although, you're new here, aren't you? Yes, uh, I'm Brother Andrew. Oh. Are you a monk? Oh, yes, yes, I'm, I'm Brother Joseph. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. What's all this? Oh, well, this. Oh, yes, yes, uh, I'm being punished. <laughs> punished? Yeah. Only another six years to go. <laughs> oh, and then it's back to getting up at four in the morning to feed the pigs. I tell you, I can't wait. <laughs> if you're being punished, how come the cell door's always open? Mental torture. <laughs> they expect me to sneak into that cell next door with its lovely wooden bed and damp walls. <laughs> you know, sometimes I almost yield to the temptation, but I, I have to force myself to go to the pub every night instead. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fancy a drink? Oh, no, I mustn't. Thank you very no, of much. Of course not, of course not. I'm the one who's being punished, and I've got to drink this whole bottle myself. <laughs> I, I can't believe all this. Just look at this. 
Look what they make me wear every night. <laughs> oh, please, Janice, haven't I suffered enough for one day? <laughs> God, I wish I'd never broken the rules. Six years they gave me, six years of hard relaxation. I tell you, it's, it's a living nightmare. Have you thought of appealing against the sentence? <coughs> no. <laughs> I broke the rules and I deserve to be punished. Excuse me for asking, but what exactly did you do to deserve all this? I accidentally trod on the abbot's toes. <laughs> abbot! Brother Andrew, don't you know that it's against the rules to visit a brother when he's being punished? I'm not a visitor, abbot. No. No. <laughs> I'm his new cellmate. Cigar? Wardrobe. All right. <laughs> One, two, three. There's so much heartache in the world. It's touching the heart of every boy and girl. Let's all join together. There's a job to be done. At 63 Park Vista, Wimbledon. <laughs> Save the cats! Save the cats! Help Mrs. Johnson's mugging to get down from the tree. Let's join our hands together in global harmony. Help Mrs. Johnson's pussy to <laughs> now Timmy was a hero around the house He never ran away from any rat or mouse He'd chase the fall of war, drink a saucer full of cream In the evening he would lick his bottom clean We did have problems finding sopranos for the church choir, but uh, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs>